Hello everybody, we are playing Arquista's Ring today. I hope you're having a good day as we uh, journey through a Nintendo classic in my opinion. And I say that even though I haven't played this in a very long time. So... Uh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> before we, we die here, the point of this game, um, you are, your kingdom was taken over by some sort of monster or demon or whatever the hell it is, and you walk through very similar maze-like levels, killing all the enemies to get a key to go into the next one. Very simple Nintendo stuff. Like, if I go kill that guy, he's probably going to give me an item. Um, as I understand it, there's like 30-something levels in this. And as you beat the game, you have to beat it like four times in a row. Um, it, it already takes long enough. We're obviously not going to play this whole thing. Um, if I feel like doing or have the time to do a full run, maybe I will. Uh, but... Don't hold your breath on that. I'm really not that good at this game. Um, so mechanics-wise, like if I hit the B button, I can use my extra items. You get more slots as the game progresses. Uh, and you can see that I have a chest plate over in the corner that I found. Um, that's your armor. There's quite a few pieces. There's like a gauntlet, a helmet, a cape, uh, a couple other things I believe. And they, they also power up. Like, if I was to pick up another chest plate, uh, it would change color. And I think gold's the highest, but again, it's, it's been a while since I've played this. I'm kind of just going off of, uh, whoops, uh, didn't mean to do that. Off nostalgia and uh, memory at this point. But I, I found it and I was like, yeah, let's load this up. Like, right, okay, that... Oh, whoops, 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 that's not what I thought it was, oh god. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay, we have more lives, good. So, I think the other thing I have is the ice rod, and I was, I meant to save the fire rod for a boss, because it's really good. I thought it was the item that clears the screen. Oh crap, these guys are not, there we go. Um, like most Nintendo games, this is a lot of pattern recognition and, uh, you know, button mashing skill, <laughs> if you can call it that. Um, I'm sure if I was to play this for a while, I would be good enough at it to give you an entertaining run through of it. Uh, I believe that's a full health potion. Yeah. Okay, and you can see we just got the shield. I think as it changes color, it blocks damage. Um, yeah, those flying guys are annoying. They're kind of stressing me out right now. There we go. We got an extra life. Yeah. All right. Had to had to focus there. Um, this game is not easy, uh, in my opinion, uh, but really, what Nintendo games are, uh, that was an era, the original Nintendo, where they were still trying to figure out what a video game could be, and they came up with really good ideas, and you had a lot of unique, fun experiences, and a lot of classics that, frankly, hold up well to this day. Um, but that being said, uh, balls to the wall kind of difficulty on a lot of these, um, which doesn't always kill the fun, but it does come close. Uh, there are games that just straight up are so difficult that they, they do in fact kill the fun factor, and you want nothing to do with them. Uh, I believe I can only use that healing panel once, yeah. So let's try to kill this zombie. Oh, God. Uh, I think he just gave me points. And the key, thank you. C 
see if these guys will give me anything. Uh, this is one of those games, though, that I had as a kid and I played the hell out of. Um, this, Rampage, Wrath of the Black Manta, the original Super Mario, those were like my jam back in the day. Of course, Nintendo games were also like $60 which is probably over a hundred dollars if you count for inflation. Uh, that was the other thing. They didn't really understand price structuring with video games. Uh, so you tended to rent games for like a weekend and that was your exposure to them was just like, you know, 12 to 15 hours of mindless fun. Uh, whereas the games you owned were the only thing you had to play for weeks on end and you would either get really good at them or you would learn to hate them and curse their very existence depending on how hard they were. That was Wrath of the Black Manta for me. I, I cursed the, that game all the time. Uh, nightmarishly hard, again, in my opinion. You might have beaten it. Uh, the, I got to level 3 somehow once. I believe there's only 4 stages. Uh, that game is, is a nightmare. Uh, maybe we'll play it one day. In the meantime, we're playing Arquista's Ring. Fun little game. Uh, you are the elf maiden Arquista, I believe. And as we discussed, you're trying to win back your kingdom. And you can only do that if you beat it four times in a row. Uh, to get the quote-unquote true ending. Which, knowing Nintendo games, it's probably just, you know, you are a winner, don't do drugs. Is this the exit? Yeah, okay. Yeah, you you weren't really rewarded for all your hard work and sacrifice beyond the oh, I can feel proud of my accomplishment factor uh, when it came to NES games and frankly, a lot of Super Nintendo games. Uh, one of the reasons that I ended up liking role-playing games so much um, like, you know, the old Final Fantasies, Earthbound, things of that sort is that when you won, there was like a little story going on at the end still. And you're like, oh wow, I did something. I'm awesome. Uh, you get that sense of accomplishment a lot from modern games. Um, the whole, oh, I'm proud that I beat that, that was a hard game. Eh, it just doesn't do it for me. Not to say that I haven't beaten games that I found exceedingly difficult just for doing it. Just to say I could do it. Um... But at the same time, I feel I, I want to I want to connect to these characters on some level, and and know what happened to them after our adventures together ended. And uh, I've been that way since I was I was young, um, very much into the character aspects. You know, connecting with one or two characters. Ooh, two health potions. That is fantastic. Uh, we might actually get pretty far today. Uh, that will be neat. Get some more items, some more health. All right. Uh, we are not doing too bad. Let's... Uh, we'll carry this on for a little bit longer and maybe do a second playthrough if, uh, if I feel like retouching this. I mostly just kind of wanted to do something different. Uh, need a little bit of a break from Streets of Rogue. You know, it's an alpha game with two levels you can go to. And I've clocked in like over 20 hours. Um, oh god, yeah, these things. You have to... You have to wait for them to move. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Or just, you know, eat the hit, which I guess we're going to have to do. Uh, I could have sworn that they would eventually move out of your way. And maybe they do. I don't know. Uh, we got to find the hidden path, I believe. Um, Nintendo games, of course. Notorious for this. Uh, cryptic bullshit, <laughs> as it were. Which you could discover by trial and error. I'm not saying it's that difficult, but this is before the internet existed, so games that were particularly cryptic, like 
you know, kneeling for two minutes in that one spot at Castlevania or whatever the hell it is. Stuff like that. You know, again, you were you were playing the game for hours and hours, weeks and weeks. Oftentimes, it's your only form of entertainment. Um, that's how we discovered those things, and then it got around the schoolyard. Or, you know, you'd have a friend, and everybody had this friend back in the day, who would come to school one morning and be like, Oh, over, over the break, we went to my cousin's house in so-and-so, and he unlocked this in the game, and he said you had to do this, and enter this password, and stand in that spot. And a lot of times it was crap, and it never worked. But other times it would happen, and that kid would be the hero of the playground for 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 days <laughs> uh, like oh he's the one that that discovered this and eventually the hype would die down and we'd all go back to talking about wrestling or whatever it is we liked usually wrestling I don't know about you but uh, throughout the 80s and 90s that was huge a lot bigger than it is now um, although it did get pretty big again in the attitude era and we're kinda getting off on a tangent here uh, has literally nothing to do with this game. Unless, unless they made a wrestling version of this. Uh, somebody mod that, that I would play that. Arquista's Arena. Her, Arquista's Wrestling Ring, there you go. Uh, follow her journey as she wrestles orcs, wolves, and vampires for the international heavyweight belt. Alright. So, this game's at least nice and gives you a hint. That's obviously the tree that you hit. So, uh, you know what? We'll, we'll try to play up to the first boss. And bosses in this, they're just kind of like really tanky enemies. They don't, they don't do anything special. You just have to have fire rods available. Um, seems to be what works the best. And you'll know you're on a boss stage because the music gets really frantic. Like... You know, it, it, there's like two songs in this game. This one, and then the frantic boss music. Although this one's kind of got some, uh, got some funk to it. You know, a little bit of stank on that bass line. Okay, yeah, wow. Alright, let's, let's get the hell out of there. Is this what I think it is? Yes, okay, that's what I was talking about earlier. Um, that will kill everything. I believe it kills the immovable guys, or the you know, environmental hazard guys like the blobs and things like that. Okay, um, there we go. Got stuck in the pause menu there. Um, just using a, uh, a controller not of the era of this game for one reason or another. Um, it, it does make it a little bit harder, honestly. Uh, I guess I could just... Get, oh, Jesus. I guess I could just get a controller uh, that looks or feels like a Nintendo one, but I'm lazy. Um, notoriously so. Uh, use up about 99% of all the strength and willpower I have at work and then do nothing at home. Uh... I'm sure a lot of you are like that. Oh my god, where's the boss? Uh, you know, we, we might continue this at a later date. Um, I will save state this probably. Or just die. Because, uh, my god, the, the boss, where is he? What, where? Oh my god. <sighs> yeah, this is... Really, it's the song, I think, more than anything, is wearing on my patience. Yeah, like I said, it's cool, it's funky. Uh, I'm done with it. You know, how much of a loop is this? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Alright, if this isn't the boss level, we'll quit. I'll save state, and we'll come back to it uh, next time. Make this a two-parter. And... Yes, okay, this is the boss. We'll beat him real quick and then we'll stop. Or we'll attempt to anyways. 
So after you clear out the boss floor, which, screw it, let's just do that, you'll see that he will appear to block your progress. I believe those guys are unkillable. Um, hopefully the ice rod can kill him. Yes. So first boss is a manticore. Okay, that was not what I thought it was. Uh, we might be screwed. Oh lord. Yeah, we might be screwed. Um, yeah. Oh god. Oh god. I forgot I had a life. Oh god. Oh god. Yeah. Uh, these bosses, like I said, are tanky as hell. Uh, the fire rod will kill them almost instantly, uh, but we don't have that. No, yeah. Oh, thanks. Yeah, really appreciate that game. Alright, so I'm going to call that a day. Uh, I think I've shown you pretty much all this game has to offer. The rest of the game is like 30 levels of this. Not really worth going into. There's people who play the game much better and do full playthroughs. Um, feel free to check them out. Uh, if I can find an interesting one, I'll, I'll post a link to it at some point. Uh, either way, y'all have a good day.